Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the analysis of Yoleno TV. I hope you well from whatever you're watching this channel. I'd like to start this session by appreciating you so much for making this channel grow. If you wish to support us, just subscribe to our channel and give this video a like. Well, it seems as if Kenyans will now prepare for more pain from this Kenya Kwanza regime. Earlier on, I saw some of those submissions from uh, Professor Njunguna Ndungu and also from uh, Davis Chirchir. And in that presentation, I could, see also, I could also see the EPRA boss seated at the back there. Probably this discussion was going to be one on uh, the high cost of living. So, Davis Chirchir was taken to task to explain why there are so many taxations so many and for the first time i heard of anti-adultery tax i mean I, I never heard of that but that is also on the fuel anti-adultery tax so i was caught by surprise you know being a kenyan citizen also who is concerned uh, who wants the better the, the best for our country but in his submission, Davis Chirchir blamed Hamas Israel war. Kwamba hiyo itafanya mafuta itoke from where it is to 300. Albeit, we can do much on the international pricing of petroleum, which has soared from a $70 to $80 to $90. And I read an article in the Financial Times the other day because of the Hamas and uh, Israeli war that freight uh sorry that the international prices could go up to 150 dollar and that would literally mean our products going to a high of 300 shillings uh per liter at the pump we hope it doesn't get there two months ago moses could have said by february mafuta itakuwa iko at uh did he say 250 per liter around there petrol will be retailing at 250 there and then Kenyans could not take it and decided to politically fry him. And you know what happened to Moses Kura back after up on the old on a reshuffled. So CS Davis Chirichir has again shocked Kenyans by saying that the possibility of uh, oil or other fuel or let's just say petrol retailing at 300 eco Jew simply because Israel Hamas war. But again, something that is quite bizarre in this uh, submission, the questioning, is that there was a tweet that Museveni shared. And Museveni said that instead of buying fuel from middlemen who are making it look very expensive, we opt to go directly to the supplier. Meaning, uh, Museveni could be cutting ties with Kenya matters of oil procurement. Middlemen. So the question here that begs is, could this be the reason why now fuel eco Jew? Because of the middlemen? Because the middlemen are escalating these prices when you're on attacker, so they control the prices. So the problem is not uh, the Gulf country that is supplying us with oil. Nakomba, the problem is the middlemen. Because what Museveni is saying, uh, and I think it's going to affect our economy, Sana, is going to consider working with other countries. Other countries. That was a G2G. We were very concerned, and I think His Excellency uh, 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 Chair Kalonzo Musioka has raised that issue. We've had concerns from our neighbors in Uganda about that G2G. There was some opaqueness to that deal. Uh, I would like to know from the CS National, I mean, the CS uh, Energy, whether uh, that framework agreement has been uh, tabled in Parliament, whether the extent that our neighbors uh, raised concerns, and I think they are making some serious uh, decisions based on uh, what is happening in Kenya. I uh, got from uh, the, uh, I mean, President Museveni's uh, comments and uh, this is what he said, if you look at his Twitter, 
that without my knowledge, our wonderful people uh, who are buying these huge quantities of petroleum products from middlemen in Kenya. A whole country buying from middlemen in Kenya or anywhere else. It's amazing, but it's true. This is what is happening. Why not buy from refineries abroad and transport through Kenya and Tanzania, cutting the cost created by these middlemen? Uh, we would like to know uh, from the CS, uh, because we, uh, we, we are told our Ugandan uh, neighbors, who are our biggest trading partners actually, are considering, uh, of course, engaging uh, uh, Tanzania and uh, other alternative uh, uh, routes, which will also have serious uh, impact. Uh, please enlighten us on that. This will have a ripple effect in the Kenyan's economy. That is what the economists say. But the fact that it, our fuel is going to be at 300, and the fact that our Kenyan uh, uh, currency is becoming weak, weaker by the day compared to the Ken to the Tanzania currency and the Ugandan currency, is one of the reasons why Professor Njunguna Ndungu could not answer that question Vizuri. And also, CS Davis Chirichir also failed to answer his questions correctly. So what does that mean? Simple. Maybe... Kenyans will pay heavily kwa mafuta. If at all what I heard there that uh, they are still experimenting is true because actually if you heard what Opio and I said, uh, he asked when, when will they stop experimenting? I mean, uh, are we, are we in an, still in the experimental mood? I mean, to just to try to find out whether we can sustain our bills or whether we can sustain our economy. So we are still on the extra uh, experimental uh, trajectory. I think going by what was said there in that uh, and uh, in that uh, session of uh, bombers bipartisan talks is uh, to see us energy from the table that I have before me. Fuel lands uh, at a cost of one twenty three. When you add taxes, it goes to 217. And uh, it seems taxation on fuel can have an impact on tax collection. I, I read last week that KRA has missed its uh, uh, target on fuel by 1.2 billion in the first quarter of 2023-2024. And that's a negative effect on our desire to collect taxes. Now, CS, yes, this is the statistics. That's the real position on the ground. What should be the way forward, bearing in mind also that these high taxes have a very high cost, I mean a very high impact on the cost of living. Number two, this issue of, of subsidy uh, related to the, the 80 shillings that uh, Kenyans bear as a tax per litre of fuel they consume. They understand it, uh, subsidies are a measure the government uh, puts in place to lower the cost of fuel or the price of fuel so that you cushion the general uh, uh, public. Now we all agree that the cost of fuel is beyond the reach of many Kenyans as, as we speak. Some countries like Mexico, President Lopez is using subsidy to cushion the citizen. Doesn't the government feel the pain of Kenyans, the suffering of Kenyans, to consider this issue of uh, subsidy? Kenyans will still pay more for oil. I mean, that's the reality. Kama vile wamesema pale, kama umefatizia, umefatizo video vizuri, umefata vile Davis Chichiri amesema, umefata vile Professor Ndungu amesema, that means Kenyans bado ataumia. And I think this is this bipartisan talk. Kuala moko na sema haita faulu. Mina ona kama inajari ku ku, ku faulu because now in exposed vitu vingi. Eh? There was that talk of at the I think the the head of a budgetary allocation committee, yeah, who said uh, uh, that salary yamba na pewa na ili yamba ina budgeted for are too different. What she's being paid. Is a third of what has been budgeted for. That is budgeted corruption. 
So that's what she said there. But one of the most shocking revelations that uh, was made before this committee was by the control of budget about a new phenomenon called budgeted corruption. <laughs> now that we have the National Treasury here, because she went on record, would like you to also go on record to clarify this issue that shocked us, that shocked the nation. And uh, uh, she talked about, she gave an example of her own salary. Uh, and she said when she looked at what had been budgeted was three times. Uh, yet what she gets is what is her actual salary. Therefore, there is something fishy at the National Treasury. There's some cooking going on there. I would like you, uh, CS, to clarify this issue. Because we know that uh, uh, corruption is one of the biggest, actually, challenges that the country is facing. It's estimated that almost 30 percent of our budget really uh, is consumed by uh, uh, corruption. So I think this bipartisan talk has solved a lot, and uh, despite the fact that the regime in a final chest stamping, like in a bipartisan talk, it may reveal ukweli. Na kama ulikuwa nafatizia kabisa pia pale hinga na hinga kiongea kisema housing levy, mara housing tax, mara ni tax, mara ni levy, mara ni hii, mara ni hii. Unapata kwamba yeye alikuwa anagonga gonga tu statement zake, anagonga huko, anagonga huko. So at the end of the day, he was contradicting uh, the treasury CS, Professor Njuguna Ndungu. I think that's why you find that he had to admit that the issues of tax he had ongelea, hata ongelea tu mambo ya nyumba. Eh? But the bottom line ni kwamba they were not on the same page. So, ladies and gentlemen, just go below the comment section and tell us what do you think about this revelation by Davis Chirichir that you will now pay 300 for for petrol in future. Not even in future. In fact, yeah, I can say in future because even tomorrow is a future. So, in future, it could be a month or two months or three months or four months, but 300 will be the retail price. And you know that M7 is withdrawing ile uh, biashara yake na Kenya matters of mafuta. Why? Because middlemen are uh, wameongeza mafuta, 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 mafuta. Middlemen are the reasons why mafuta inapanda juu. So here yeah, amesema kwamba middlemen are the reason, not where inatoka. So it looks like pale mafuta inatoka, bei iko chini. Lakini middlemen wamewakisha kwamba imeenda juu with now numerous taxations like the one I told you about the the anti adultery tax. Perhaps if you're watching this video for the first time, or a regular viewer who has not subscribed to this channel, please, I'd like to kindly request you to subscribe to this channel and give this video a like. Mind you, if you like our video, it YouTube gets to share it to other people. So it's so, so important if you like this video. To those who have supported us by either subscribing, liking, or sharing our videos, I want to say that I'm forever grateful for that support because without you, this channel cannot grow. So until you catch up again, stay safe and stay blessed.